Right, so you're back for some more back garden anatomy, are you? I'm not sure this is the greatest idea today. We might have a shower, it's a little bit chilly and breezy, but last week we talked about golfer's elbow. This week we're gonna talk about tennis elbow. Why are they different? And again, this isn't medical advice. This is an excuse for me to talk about some of the anatomy of the forearm that can be quite difficult to get to grips with. So we're gonna talk about what, go what tennis elbow is, what muscles and tendons are involved, what movements are involved, which is pretty important. Uh, and we'll rehash the whole what's a tendinopathy thing. And we'll add in a couple of movements we didn't talk about last week. So I'm at home because we're still doing the whole COVID semi-lockdown thing. I'm not allowed back into work yet. I'm gonna have to strip off, aren't I, to, um, talk about my elbow. Right, um, so let's see if I can find some photos as well of skeletons and plastic models and muscles and that sort of thing. But you'll probably be aware that this is the humerus, the bone in here is the humerus, and in the forearm we have two bones. We have the radius and the ulna. The radius is on the thumb side, that's your radial pulse you feel for. And this is the elbow joint. And at the elbow joint we have a number of things going on. The elbow joint is largely a hinge but we can also pronate and supinate the radius over the ulna, which is largely happening at the elbow, but happens at both ends, really. Okay, so we've got some lumpy bumpy bits. This is the olecranon, and it's these two, it's these two lumps here that we're interested in when we talk about golfer's elbow and tennis, tennis elbow. So um, whenever we have a bone with some lumpy bits, it usually means things attach here. And in this case, we were looking at golfer's elbow and we saw the muscles of the flexor compartment have a common flexor tendon that run from the medial epicondyle of the humerus to the wrist and the hand. And we see the same thing all over here. So this is the lateral epicondyle of my humerus here. From the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, you can see all these extensor muscles here. This is the posterior compartment of the forearm. So there's also a common extensor tendon and a number of muscles running to the wrist and the fingers run from that common extensor tendon and they're going to contribute to a few movements. So the muscles that run to the wrist, the wrist is called the carpus, the muscles on the extensor side that run to the wrist will give extension of the wrist. So that's extension of the wrist, that's flexion, extension, flexion. Also, some of the muscles here are going to run into the fingers and they'll give extension of the digits, extension of the fingers here. Um, when we talk about those muscles, they get called digitorum. There are muscles of the little finger, muscles of the index finger and that sort of thing, but we're not going into too much detail today. So we have extensors of the fingers, and then there are some muscles of the thumb in here as well, which don't concern us today, but muscles that move the thumb get called pollicis. So, tennis elbow also gets called lateral epicondylitis, although it's usually not really an itis. We'll talk about that later. Um, so pain, is usually found around the lateral epicondyle and that pain might be caused by making a fist, gripping thing, shaking somebody's hand, opening a jar, that sort of thing. So what's actually causing that? Well in many cases it's an overuse injury, it's a repetitive strain injury and the reason it gets called tennis elbow is is because it's related to the backhand holding a racket and hitting with a backhand and I'm, I don't really play tennis I don't know much about it but I think like poor technique can exacerbate this and what have you so what's happening there well what's happening is that if you're holding the tennis racket here these muscles are not so much I don't think they're extending the wrist as such as much as they are resisting uh, flexion of the wrist and you can see these muscles popping up here. So we need to consider the muscles and the tendons and the movements. Okay, so this muscle that you can see popping up here, so I am, so if I am partially pronated and then I flex my elbow, 
we can see this muscle extend here. This is brachioradialis. This isn't really a muscle that we're interested in today, but brachioradialis runs from the brachium, the arm, to the radius, brachioradialis. And the other muscles are nearby, so it's a good landmark for us. Now, next to brachioradialis, from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, there are, well, I say from, okay, there are two muscles that run from the humerus to the wrist on the radial side. And those muscles will extend the wrist. Um, and they are extensor carpi radialis. But we have two, we have a long one and a short one. Extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. So right next to brachioradialis, we would find, and it's difficult to pick out which is which, but extensor, extensor carpi radialis longus runs from the humerus, just superior to that lateral epicondyle, and it runs to the second metacarp the base of the second metacarpal bone those are the long bones in here uh, so extensor carpi radialis longus is incredibly important in flexion of the wrist um, but that again is still not the muscle we're most interested in it's its brother extensor carpi radialis brevis brevis meaning short that runs from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the base of the third metacarpal um, and that's actually running from, as I say, this, there's, a, there's a, a, an extensor tendon here, and a common extensor tendon, because a number of the muscles we're going to talk about all come from this common extensor tendon. And it's the, this common extensor tendon that has, uh, you know, it, it, it started to degenerate, it started to change, and that's where the swelling and the pain is in that extensor tendon. That's the area we need to treat, and that's where the pain will be. So extensor carpi radialis brevis, that is the muscle most likely to be causing the strain on the tendon and the pain, or move, use of that muscle. Now the other muscles, it's really difficult for me to do this backwards, the other muscles coming from that common extensor tendon will be extensor digitorum, right, so giving extension of the digits, extensor digitorum, Extensor digiti minimi, digiti minimi means the little finger. Extensor, can you see, you can see it, can you? <laughs> so we've got um, extensor digitorum, so we've got flexor carpi radialis brevis and longus, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, and we've got extensor carpi ulnaris so running to the ulna side the older bone is on this side the radius is on this side so extensor carpi ulnaris is running over here as well and those muscles all of those muscles come from this common extensor tendon that attaches to the the uh, lateral epicondyle of the humerus so that's their origin site their site of origin okay more movements now consider extension of the of the wrist, here we have extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis ulnaris. Sorry, extensor carpi ulnaris. They all work together to give extension of the wrist. And there are um, companion muscles on the opposite side, or antagonistic muscles, when we're on the other side that do the opposite. So those muscles are involved in. In extending the wrist but there's more to it than that so if we consider the flexor compartment the muscles here are not only flexing the wrist we also have muscles in here that are flexing the fingers so when we're flexing the fingers this is when we're gripping something but imagine the muscles running through here and tied down by the retinaculum and the other connective tissues the muscles that are running through here if you contract them not only do they want to flex the fingers but they also if they want to if they're going to shorten they also have the potential to flex the wrist so whenever we make a fist or we grip something we need to use the extensor muscles the extensor carpi muscles the extensor muscles of the wrist on the other side to prevent that flexion of the wrist you see what i mean so when you make a fist that when i make a fist 
these muscles contract as well. And you can palpate this on yourself. So when you make a fist, these muscles contract. Why are they contracting? Because they're preventing that movement from happening. So that's why if somebody has pain here, if somebody has um, lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow pain, gripping something, firm handshake, whatever, can cause pain. So whenever you're considering the muscles of the forearm, these are all the things I want you to be thinking about. I often joke to my students that that seemingly simple action could be easily a three to five thousand word essay on what's going on in there just with the muscles. Okay, now as we're talking about extensive things as well as um, flexor things from last week, I'm going to add on another movement that I didn't talk about last week. <sighs> All right, so in the anatomical position, that movement might get called abduction of the wrist and adduction of the wrist, abduction and adduction. Or because the radius is on this side, that might get called radial deviation and that might get called ulnar deviation. Now consider what's going on here. So if we lift a hammer, so we have radial deviation against gravity and if you do this yourself have a look at the muscles here to make that action we're using extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor carpi radialis longus and flexor carpi um, radialis they've got to work together to raise the hammer so when we're talking about repetitive strain injuries of tendons and muscles we're not just talking about simplistic we're not just talking about extension of the wrist flexion of the wrist extension of the fingers flexion of the fingers and that sort of thing you've also got to think that repetitive actions like this are also having effects at the elbow so movements of the wrist movements of the fingers cause repetitive strain injuries at the elbow medial epicondyle muscles of the flexor compartment of the forearm, lateral epicondyle, muscles of the extensor compartment of the forearm, but in some cases those muscles have got to work together to do other movements. All right? It's cool, isn't it? So why do I say it's not really epicondylitis? Well, because most injuries are a tendinopathy. Well, we still call, well, no, they get called tendinitis. We call them tendinopathies or tendinosis. And as I said, when we were talking about golfer's elbow, what we see happening in the tendon here are long-term chronic degenerative changes of the connective tissue. We see um, a disorganization of the collagen fibers and the connective tissues in there. We see uh, changes in the cellularity and vascularization and things like that. So we see repetitive strain injury, overuse injury, long-term changes to the tendon. And tendon injuries then take a very long time to heal. We're talking months, you know. Um, maybe six months for something like that to heal really we mean be less painful and maybe the structure be a bit bit more normal whereas muscles heal much faster it's not an acute inflammatory thing uh, sometimes uh, it is caused by acute injuries you know like you swing a hammer and you damage the tendon or the the junctions between the muscle and the tendon or the tendon and the bone or whatever so you can have a an acute injury brought on by a specific activity um, but um, and after that there'll be a short period of inflammation but generally for most tendinopathies we don't see inflammation we see we see other things going on okay that's tennis elbow a companion to golfer's elbow tennis elbow is a tendinopathy or certainly pain associated with the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and from there we see a number of muscles of the extensor compartment of the forearm running to the wrist and the fingers. We see extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, extensor carpi ulnaris. So we need to consider those movements, how we're going to rest and support uh, and strengthen the tendon and maybe the muscles as well there, alright? That's it. That's what tennis elbow is. See you next time.